I imagine it's always tremendously difficult to launch a brand new IP in the current gaming landscape. When Kanitsugami Path of the Goddess was revealed in 2023, I'm not sure that anyone really cared. Here was this somewhat confusing looking game that was deeply entrenched in Japanese mythology with an otherworldly appearance that was competing against the likes of the first Monster Hunter Wilds trailer in an announcement of Resident Evil 4's DLC. What was Capcom thinking? Thankfully, those fears disappeared when the game eventually came out a year later. Reviews were positive, and many people were surprised by just how unique Kunitsugami was. Tower defense can be a tricky genre to nail down at the best of times, but Capcom managed somehow to couple it with action gameplay in a formula that was engaging for the majority of players. Talk about a dark horse of a game. While all the ideas are sound here, Kunitsugami really only suffers from a lack of diversity in its content. In that respect, it's similar to last year's Exoprimal, though at least this game offers a complete story and has no revolving unlockables. For those wondering why I'm reviewing Kunitsugami so late, it's that I decided to give it a shot while in between different projects. I had a few days before getting a code for Killing Time Resurrected, and I became interested in Capcom's genre hybrid when I learned that Baby Assassin star Saori Izawa did the action direction. Izawa has shown a remarkable skill in the Baby Assassin's trilogy, and is a rising star within the Japanese film industry, so to see her put her talents on full display in a video game was something I couldn't pass up. The main plot of Kanitsugami Path of the Goddess revolves around the people of Mount Kafuku battling a supernatural force known as the Seath. Their homes have been flooded by defilement, and it falls on our hero, named So, to guide the chosen goddess, named Yoshiro, down the mountain to purify the villages for its inhabitants. There's a light environmentalist message here, but the story is mostly an excuse to set this game in a firmly Japanese world with creatures inspired by Japanese folklore. To that end, there are only a few brief cutscenes with any dialogue in them. Kunitsugami is focused almost entirely on its gameplay, and after an action-heavy tutorial, the game lightly eases players into its specific quirks with levels that fully explain each mechanic. Calling Kunitsugami a tower defense game is technically accurate, but this actually feels closer to an action game with strategy elements than the previous descriptor would signify. The general idea for each level is that you start off with only your sword and barely any skills, and that you must not only carve a path through the defilement for the goddess to follow, but that you must also save villagers to then aid you in battle and clear specific pieces of defilement to gather resources that are used to assign said villagers different roles. Those roles are where the gist of Kanitsugami's strategic elements come from, with each role possessing different abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. At first, you will only have access to a melee unit called the Woodcutter, but eventually you'll unlock archers, shamans, priests, sumos, gunmen, and even ninjas. As is typical with tower defense games, you'll place these units along Yoshiro's path and direct them to battle foes as they approach. All of your resource gathering happens during a daytime period where you're given free reign to explore closed off spaces. Once nighttime hits, the goddess stops moving and the seeth begin to pour into the stage. Not content to have players set up units and simply wait, Kanutsugami upends the whole genre and lets players have direct control over So to do battle with the Seath. If you want, you can even forego any units and take just So into combat. All of this is fine on paper and it plays out pretty well. The combat is basic but very snappy. The combos are easy to remember and execute, and you're given a variety of upgrades to not only power up So and the villagers, but to differentiate what moves you have. Where Kunitsugami really comes into its own is with the scenarios you encounter. It would have been easy for Capcom to create the basic template and repeat it for an arbitrary length, but Kunitsugami is not a lazy game. It's a simple premise, but one that fully exploits itself. After the first few stages, you'll head into a boss arena that houses a foe not dissimilar to something out of Devil May Cry. You'll have villagers with you who you can assign different roles, and you'll face off against a towering foe while protecting the goddess. In these levels, you can direct all of your units at once to either attack the boss or defend Yoshiro, and it's simple to even do in the midst of combat. So is a perfect guard technique that could eventually be upgraded with a counterattack, making the combat feel even more focused in these encounters. This is where you'll be first pushed to use your Suba guard techniques, which are like ultimate attacks from Street Fighter. Once a meter fills, you can press a button and unleash a devastating attack that will break the boss's guard meter. Certain heavier seeth also have this meter, and past the introduction, 
a wide vestiary of foes begins to populate each level, giving specific arenas their own flavor. That's still not even everything Kunitsugami has to offer. Following a few levels of basic tower defense slash action mashup, the game throws specific scenarios at you. One involves So not having any villagers whatsoever, while another takes place within a darkened cave that requires you to direct villagers to light lanterns. There is even a level taking place on boats where maneuverability is particularly limited and you'll need to make use of cannons to help dispatch incoming seeth. Other levels have alternate paths and specific pieces of equipment that can be repaired and will help slow down the progress of the seeth. It's constantly engaging during the first half of the campaign never ceasing to find new ways to mix up its moment-to-moment -moment thrills. The only problem is that, after the midway point, Kanitsugami cannot keep up with this excellent pace. While there are always new bosses and different foes being introduced, those scenarios simply repeat themselves, and the final couple of levels just throw more at you instead of finding new or different ways to test your ability. There is a base-building sort of minigame in between stages that has you restoring specific villages to then upgrade your abilities beyond a certain limit, but it's hampered by a clunky menu and a lack of customization. I'm also not sure what to make of the ending of the game. Once you finish the last boss in Kanitsugami, a new game plus mode is unlocked, and on paper that's fine. Everyone likes to max their characters, and getting a chance to play the game with no tutorials is obviously cool. The issue comes from Capcom putting the true ending behind a second playthrough, almost like this is some copycat of Ghosts and Goblins that wants you to waste more time for no discernible reason. While that's a minor nitpick, all things considered, it still made me sigh a little knowing that my perfectionist self would have to play this game twice through just to see the more complete ending. Even still, for a single playthrough, Kanitsugami Path of the Goddess is a mostly well-realized and executed game. I do wish that Capcom kept the flow of newer scenarios and monsters going for longer, but there are a ton of possibilities here that can be expanded on for a sequel. The monsters are all fun to battle and instantly recognizable, the levels are pretty well designed and push this game's mechanics to their fullest. The audio-visual presentation is also incredible, something I haven't even brought up because it should be evident from this video. Capcom has hit upon something magical with the RE engine. I just would have liked more beyond the default scenario here, like maybe a challenge mode or some custom scenarios. How about Saori Izawa's choreography? She did all of the motion capture for So and was instrumental in bringing to life the Kagura dancing that is featured in this game. You can see some of her recording sessions in the behind the scenes videos Capcom has released, and her strengths as a stunt performer shine through here. The animations are wonderful, and it makes me wish there were more cutscenes so that we could see some cool action. Overall though, I enjoyed my time with Kanitsugami Path of the Goddess. I don't think we've hit the apex of what is possible with this tower defense action hybrid, but we rarely see first stabs at mostly new genres come out this great. If Capcom can turn this into a smaller series that continues to iterate every few years or so, I think the possibilities are endless. Just imagine one where you play as the Seath, or even games based on the mythologies of different cultures. I think that would be incredibly cool.